We finish off with the story on the back page of the Daily Nation, our news review segment this morning. It says, hunger crisis set to worsen, say the United Nations. Now, more than 3.6 million Kenyans will be in need of relief food by August this year. Uh, this is according to a report by United Nations Humanitarian Agency that says the latest situation indicates that because of delay of rain, the long rain, uh, poor uh, crop yield or performance, late planting season, infestation of armyworms in 25 counties, steep increase in prices of staple food and resource-based conflict, uh, Kenyans are likely to be in a situation where there will be dire need for food. Francis, I start with you. What does this mean? Does mm -hmm. it mean the government needs to do something and prepare more than they prepared for the crisis we have now? Definitely the government does to, to and uh, when I talk of government, I mean uh, even the county governments, because uh, the operations, there is that uh, in Manchester City. Mm -hmm. I think uh, both national government, county governments, and even our development partners, it is high time our government plans and ensure no Kenyan dies of anger. We need also to plan to ensure, uh, since we had very little rains, uh, that we have alternative sources of water. Because when we, uh, we reach somewhere and then we start saying we are rationing, we will have water per week. We need now to plan and ensure at least uh, every part. We only have uh, one month, remember? Ye yes, but we can. We, 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 we can do something. We can do something. And uh, I want to caution uh, Kenyans. You know, we wait until something happens so that we can make capital and killings uh, out of it. Uh, we see uh, a humanitarian uh, crisis that is uh, upcoming and we plan to exploit to ensure we also uh, something that uh, could cost 2 billion we make sure it costs 10 billion so that uh, we can also gain uh, indirectly out of it we I think we need to plan early to avoid some of these things Which is this would be of interest to you according <coughs> to this UN report released yesterday nearly 344,000 children and more than 37,000 pregnant and lactating women are acutely malnourished are in, and in dire need of treatment Yes, and I know it's sad first of all, uh, now we have to appreciate as a country that climate change is real and and this is one thing I go back now to the county government, as uh, my colleague says, that um, you know when you look at the counties that have received more allocation, I wish they would have done something at the county level, knowing very well that rain, uh, we have scarce rain at the moment, and, and, and looking even going forward, that uh, county governments must take on uh, the issue of food security. In and you're very speaking as a senator now. Yes. The person and tasked with making sure counties work. And, uh, and, and I remember also doing a bill. The reasons were to assist county governments now to come into the system, but in the end of the day we knew you must, the president has to be the one to take charge because now when there's drought like this, uh, and this is now UN coming in, it means you have to negotiate with the president of the country to now start looking for food elsewhere but don't forget it is not just a region it's, it's not a kenyan problem it's a regional problem therefore now we have to look beyond our regions because even if you say you want to look to tanzania they have the same crisis you go to uganda i know in the north right now it's really painful for them so what we are saying you have started a process to ensure that we will see food coming in and i'm hoping they have planned not just to august but beyond i think up to the end of the year we have to see how to ensure Kenyans don't die because of food. So I'm, I'm hoping, and, 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 and that's why I always say, you know, in the end of the day, it is me, it is my colleague Weka here, it's my colleague. We work in whatever institutions we've been given, tasked by Kenyans, by government. And if we work together as a team, we can always succeed as a country. But the other thing we need to ask ourselves going forward is that now we don't have rain meaning even our rivers will go low. Yeah. So what next do we have to do? And this is something, and I know I met young people yesterday in Mombasa, and they gave me a very interesting uh, research they are doing on agriculture, and I told them, kindly do that research, send your proposals so that you can also help. Look at the issue of worms. It is a new uh, thing coming in, and it has really affected the areas 25 where... 25 of the 47 yes. counties. In so that is another thing, researchers. We need more researchers to come in. As we look of maize, 
What what else do what we need? Do we need uh, mogo? Do we need uh, the potatoes. The, uh, potatoes? What do we need so that we uh, fight this? Mashuma irungu kanata very quickly because time is not on our side. Your take on this uh, looming hunger crisis and how best to resolve it moving forward? To, to me, I see an opportunity in uh, the, the Gulf crisis. Eh? The richest country in this world is called Qatar. Qatar. Yes, it is the richest country in terms of GDP per capita. That is per person, that is the highest in the world. So therefore, uh, it is currently under isolation. Uh, and therefore, the best thing I would urge our government to consider doing is to rush there and talk to that <laughs> Emir. Tell him to bring some of his money to this country and uh, invest in irrigation. They get some little food and they will also get some little food out of that uh, conjoined cooperation. Uh, I'm aware several Gulf countries have such kind of a scheme where they go and lease land. Uh, to, and therefore, the, the problems that we are having at coast, the irrigation project called Galana in Tana River, can be remedied by having what we call a synergy between Kenya and any progressive Gulf country. And personally, I would propose Qatar, particularly now it is facing a lot of isolation from Bahrain. Because of security, Bahrain. which you, one thing you've never been very keen on spending so much on security. Ah, that's neither here nor there. You see, the issue is when people become uh, food secure. Uh, Everything else will fall in place. Yes, uh, of course, you recall, I think it was the Nkrumah who said, seek ye first economic freedom and, and everything shall, shall be handed upon this. The issue of uh, looming hunger in August, what would be the best remedy, given that we only have one month to August? This is what I call the popcorn approach. You know, when the popcorn is hot, it pops. When it is cold, the maize settles. The maize settles. Now, you know, all this boils down to proper planning. Uh, you know there's been global warming you know very well that we have a problem in terms of changing weather patterns so you cannot reach and say oh we have a crisis you need to plan for these things and the planning is extremely important now look at uh, things that like Galana Kulalu where it was a good plan a good thought process but execution is extremely poor uh, we have spent billions and billions of shillings look at the output is a joke. It's white elephant. You know why? Because of corruption. Mm -hmm. It is about what is in it for me. It is our time to eat now. L go to countries like Libya. So for you it's planning? It is planning and proper implementation. And ex of course dealing with issues to do with corruption. Look at Libya. A country like Libya that barely receives uh, any rainfall. Any Israel. Rainfall. Look at that. Israel. Fair enough. So uh, uh, really, let me tell you Fred, it's about proper planning. I'm afraid we don't have much time, and so I'm told you have just two minutes. It would just be fair that I give each of you at least 30 seconds to give a, a recap, and 30 for 30. Well, uh, first and foremost, I know Jubilee is doing very good in terms of campaign. There's no doubt about that Uru Kenyatta seems to have a lot of energy together with his deputy. I think when you compare Raila fighting Kibaki, you'll see that Raila used to be more energized. But this time, it is now Raila fighting a more younger generation of leaders from our, from our party. So I therefore foresee uh, Raila losing. For instance, I'm going to give you an example. Uhuru came to you a region. five seconds to go? Yes, President Uhuru came to a region. He went to about almost f 15 stops within a day. Kibaki used to come and do only one stop. So faced with such kind of a, a, a battle. I don't foresee Raila being able to... Thank you very much. Uh, I want to urge, uh, thank you. I want to urge uh, Kenyans. Uh, there is, uh, uh, we have seen uh, in some regions, uh, these, uh, so uh, the, the, our national leaders from both sides, they, when they go to some regions, you hear 6 P's, 14, they go others, they say you bring whoever you want and we will work. To Kenyans, you are electing a leader who is going to serve you and go for that leader, non, not uh, these uh, parties or coalitions. Go for somebody who will serve you. Thank you. Beatrice. Uh, fellow Kenyans, I just want to say this. We go to an election, it will end, we will continue as Kenyans. We are one. And uh, I know one thing about our president today. With all his challenges, one thing, he's an honest guy. He's one man who will tell you, this I can, this I can't. That's the only thing that takes him out, even from his tribe, from his anything. Honesty. I think what we need as a country Five is to go. an honest person to move forward. As the great enough, we know we are there and we will vote for peace and we will vote for a new leader. 
a woman change. Brian, I'm sure you don't need 30 seconds. You're not going for any position. No, you? absolutely not. You know, when I listen to Kangata saying that uh, president has made, I don't know how many stops. Stops does not elect a president. It is about serious issues. Even if it was to do 40 stops in your area. The no, question is, you, okay, okay, no, okay, this, the is question, this is my 30 seconds. The question is, are you able to articulate the issues of the people? And the Kenyans really will make that decision. I just, just hope that we will I just matter. hope that we will have peaceful elections because after this we are still all Kenyans and this country belongs to all of us. We are still all Kenyans, this country belongs to all of us. On ninth August, Kenya will still be here. You will still be here. That neighbor will still be there regardless of which affiliation they belong to. But picture this. If we had planted enough trees don't you think the army moms would have given our crops a rest and maybe just feasted on the trees? <laughs> maybe we should go back and plant trees. My name is Charles Odeambo. It was a pleasure having Moshima Irungu Kangata, Moshima Francis Mwangangi, Moshima Beatriz Elachi, and of course, uh, can I call you Moshima Brian Weke? Yes. See you around. Moshimiwa? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>